we, we we've got you, my friend. I'm glad I'm glad we've got you. So uh, so Scott, you have an incredible incredible background here. Uh, first of all, talk to us a little bit about uh, deprogramming with Grace's dad. First of all, let's talk about that, and then we are going to get into the topic here. Well, deprogramming with Grace's dad would not have started if it wasn't for Grace. Uh, Grace was my daughter who was murdered in a hospital on October 13th of 2021. Uh, Grace had Down syndrome, and she was 19 years old. She was my best buddy. And ultimately, after she died and I started doing research, I came to the conclusion that I was programmed and then started deprogramming with Grace's dad to share what I've been learning about how I've been programmed. The main theme that I'm on is the uh, programming that's been done by the medical industrial complex, but the research has expanded way beyond that. I have 3,500 hours of research in what is behind this agenda uh, to kill us, and that's what I'm, I've become very outspoken in that regard. So that's what deep programming is, is about. Fantastic. So you have got an incredible Rumble channel. You have got quite the following. Talk to me a little bit about everything you're doing over there on Rumble. Well, the main thing is, is I, I do a lot of research, and then I put together the, the details and the research through slides because I see the documents. I, I have gotten to original source documents in a lot of situations, so I take those documents and then I post them by doing uh, I do a lot of monocast, so it be putting a point, and then I post them on run. So the medical murder series I finished last year. It's the seventh part series to prove that medical murder is the number one cause of death in the United States, and it's by design. And I, I was just looking at one of the uh, things. I won't use it in another. I'm just going to find it so you know what I'm talking about. And this, this one was about the polio vaccine. So the entire vaccination uh, PSYOP, this is not COVID. COVID, of course, is a PSYOP by itself, but the vaccination PSYOP, People are not aware of. They think, well, COVID was different. You know, the the supposed vaccine they developed for COVID was different, but people have a hard time grasping that the whole vaccination culture that we have has been implemented well over a hundred years. And so, a common objection I get when I'm talking to people about the vaccination psyop is, well, what about the polio vaccine? And I take them to the Federal Register. It's going to just take me a minute to. To pull this up, uh, and I show them in the Federal Register that shows that uh, the the government snuffed out all objections to the polio vaccine because they knew they were caught. And it's it's just interesting. It's it's real interesting when you start seeing these documents, and then you read them, and you see, oh my gosh, they they are literally all in on it. And you know, most most people that that I would associate with. I've been the left wing conservative, not anymore. I decided to check out of the political system altogether. But when I was a lifelong conservative, I thought uh, Ronald Reagan was our best president. Well, then when you look into the vaccination agenda, you see that he he's only signed into law on November 14th of 86, the, the National Vaccine Safety Act, which gave vaccine manufacturers immunity liability for all downstream deaths and maiming rel relative to vaccines. So think, think it through. I don't know this. If there's no consequences for your choice, that, you know that's not God's way. And so, of course, the whole thing has gone gone awry. We have got. Me, I'm just gonna, yes. I'm going to find this quickly, but yeah, go, just, go 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 uh, go I'm ahead, my friend. Case. I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna go time. ahead and find that while I reset here, and uh, we have got a great guest with us today. He joins us live here on our big broadcast. You need to look up the channel we are talking about on Rumble. It is called Deprogramming with Grace's Dad. It has uh, almost three thousand followers on Rumble. 
Uh, some of the videos get thousands and thousands of hits. Uh, just amazing, amazing work that uh, this gentleman is doing. And uh, so talk to us a little bit about where you see all this headed, my friend. Well, where I see it headed is exposing the satanic agenda. Uh, that's what I've been working on. I did a, a series called The Major Field, and that just finished up in April. Uh, it's a three-part series. It ended up being four recordings, but just to give you a, a taste, the, the uh, first part of that series I labeled, or the subtitle was, The Plan to Take Down the Satanic Cabal was written by the Satanic Cabal. And this is what people don't realize. They think that as they're waking up and they get more information, that 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 information is going to save them. They don't realize that Satan needs the evil exposed. Satan has two halves. He has an evil half and a less evil half. The less evil scripture calls the less evil the angel of light. And you can see this throughout history if you're paying attention. So think about 9-11. When 9-11 happened, what did we get out of 9-11? So 9-11 was evil. What was left evil? The Patriot Act. So the Patriot Act looked like, oh, we, you know, everybody in the country thought that was fantastic. We always gravitate towards security and comfort. Well, Satan knows that too. You know, I'm not even broaching the topic that the United States was behind 9-11 here. I'm just sharing that whenever there's evil, there's less evil. And that is the, the dialectic pattern that Satan gets participated. in. Think about Democrat versus Republican. So for a long time, yeah, this will be the first election I don't vote in. That's how much I believe that this is all part of this dialectic pattern of Satan. That you, you have evil, Democrat evil, Republican less evil. So I thought for a long time I'm voting for the lesser of two evils. But I just thought about it in concept. Now I realize it's actually true. They are literally all in on it. Think about a, a senator that most people trust, Rand Paul. And you listen to him talk, and he's talking about we need to hold people accountable for the gain-of-function research. And, you know, that is that is an attempt to keep the whole COVID side up alive. Because if, if the COVID never vaccine, how can you have gain-of-function gain of didn't even exist. So you can see from a macro view, from an esoteric view, they're literally all in on it, James. We have got well, maybe that, yes. Maybe that's, maybe that's too much. I, no, 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 no. I was I was just waiting on you to on, on you to finish. I did not want to interrupt you. That that that's one of the things we do on this broadcast is uh, people are here to hear the guest. They're they're not here to hear me. <laughs> they're they're here to you and I have a banter back and forth. So uh, one of the things that I love about what you're doing is you're doing a lot of great work uh, on Rumble and other platforms. Uh, what's been the feedback that you've gotten on all these various things? Um, I, for the most part, I would say the feedback is good. Uh, I would say 90% of it is very complimentary. They're thankful that somebody's doing research. In, you know, It's all original research for me because I'm sharing it as I'm waking up uh, yeah. but there's a few stragglers you know every once in a while you you have people for example uh, a whole thread i don't know if you looked into the background but we have the first uh, lawsuit in the country to expose medical battery during the covid that's what we're working through right now and we had our depositions over the last couple of weeks. Well, people write, and you know, they'll they have no idea why we're even filing a lawsuit, but they'll throw out things and say, "Well, you shouldn't be filing this lawsuit. You should be doing this." And people don't realize until you talk with the person and understand their why, you really don't know anything. You know, our goal with the lawsuit has nothing to do with winning a lawsuit. Of course, it would be fantastic if we win, but we are going up against a Goliath. We're going up against the Ascension Hospital System. These medical wrongful death cases, they are almost never won. What happens is most of them, if they get that far, are settled. Well, we don't plan on settling. That's not the goal here. Our goal is to shed light on evil. It's this, the evil that is in this medical industrial complex is beyond belief. But then you overlay the legal 
the Antichrist legal system on that, and it's like, you can't make this up. And when we just got done got done with these last two weeks of deposition, so this is just round one. So uh, my wife, my daughter, and myself were deposed two weeks ago. Then we had 11 doctors and nurses who were deposed last week. And as I got on the process, what actually took place in those depositions, I really came away with that we, you know, I knew this going into it, but you know, it became tangible for me that that I know the Antichrist legal system is not a place for justice. We essentially hired attorneys to dress up as characters, to play in a rigged game, to present the truth to a jury that is programmed to believe the medical system's goal is their health. As with everything else our government has sold us, the medical industrial complex is founded on lies. This time with the white coat gods program to carry out the orders. What people have a hard time understanding is that the medical industrial complex is controlled 100% by the government through what's called standards of care. The Center for Medicaid and Medicare Services writes the standards of care for the entire country. This has nothing to do with COVID. This had this has been going on since the early 80s when these standards of care became the tool that doctors use to treat patients. So all of a sudden they're not treating the patient anymore. They're treating the disease with a standard of care. And the standards of care are designed to hasten our death. And hastening death is murder. That was the impetus behind the medical murder series to prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that medical murder is the number one cause of death in the United States of America. It's hard for people to understand. I know it sounds, you know, I think think this through. If I was to hear myself talk three years ago before I started researching, I wouldn't believe what I had to say. But I've done the research. I see it with my own eyes, and I've documented it all. And uh, that's why that's why we're doing the everything's posted on Rumble and a number of other platforms. I appreciate you asking that question. Well, you you are amazing. Before we let you go, uh, what is next for you, my friend? Before before we let you go, well, what's next is that you know, so my time is invested in percent of research, twenty five percent in the lawsuit, and twenty five percent doing interviews. And you know what I see next is we have a number of other things happening with the lawsuit. I have. Uh, uh, scheduling meeting with the attorneys on Friday, you know. So that is in, um, a fair, fair amount of fire that we got open. But we are we're, we're definitely in this campaign. Um, you know, they took one of God's special children, my best buddy Grace. And, you know, there's, it messed with the wrong girl. And I'm, I'm not uh, with this. I'm just saying it messed with the wrong girl. I mean, she was my best buddy, and I want to make sure that no other dad loses their best buddy. Well, you are amazing. Keep up the good fight, my friend. We will talk to you soon. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it very much. Appreciate it, my friend. There he goes. We're going to take a quick time out. We're going to reset some things here.